Over the past few decades, we have built miracles in computation. GPUs that are so smart that they can simulate human thought. LLMs so powerful that they can hold fragments of human knowledge. Compute that has grown by almost 60,000 times over the last two decades. If you've seen a GPU and if you've cut it open, there are two parts inside a GPU. One of them that gets talked about the most is the compute. The one that doesn't get talked about the most is memory. AI today is no longer compute bound. It is memory bound. Memory is the bottleneck, is the wall to cross. The data that powers all of our LLMs today is like molasses moving through a straw. And therefore, the next generation of companies would be built to solve the memory problems of AI. We like to think about the world or the progress of models in terms of flops, floating point operations per second. And we've seen a tremendous growth in the model size when you think about GPT-3 to GPT-5. Now, what has happened is transformer sizes have grown by more than 200 times in the last two years. But what about memory? It's only grown by twice. And that is the surge that we are seeing, or that is the delta that we are seeing, where compute has grown by 60,000 times in the last two decades, but DRAM by only 100x. This is a 600-fold gap, which is the memory wall. We have optimized the speed of thought and actually compromised the speed of access. So what happens when you hit this memory wall? CPUs and GPUs that you pay thousands of dollars for are sitting idle. They are waiting for data to come in and to process that data. Like I said, transformers have grown 200 times over the last two years, whereas memory, on the other hand, has not kept up pace. This causes a tremendous economic strain, because what companies do is they try to mask this inefficiency. You will buy a lot more GPUs so that it may feel like your models are running fast and snappy. There is a company that actually claimed that for training a large language model, it can take up to 12 terabytes of RAM or memory. Now, a typical GPU comes with around 80 gigabytes of it. So you effectively need dozens of GPUs just to train an LLM. The fun part is, 40% of the compute of the GPU is underutilized, which means effectively you've just got GPUs so that you can fit the model there. There are examples of companies chopping up their models and spreading them across on GPUs to get the training done. Even on the inference side, when you look at open AIs of the world, the anthropics of the world that are talking today, they actually have to have dozens of GPUs to just serve the inference stack. And it is not because the math is hard. It is just because the model won't fit in the memory. There are a lot of at capacity incidents as well. It was very famous uh, you know, up to a year ago where you went to chat GPT and you would see that it cannot respond because it's at capacity. That was precisely because of memory and not compute. And you can see in the graph here that companies at different stages of AI development still have up to 14% of the GPUs underutilized today. That's massive amount of money that's going waste. Why is memory the bottleneck? One nanosecond. That is all it takes to run compute on a piece of data. 100 nanoseconds is what it takes to get the data from an on-chip memory. One microsecond is what it takes to get it from an off-chip memory in the best case scenario. So you're looking at a thousand-fold gap between access and compute. In a transformer architecture, the compute per byte is pretty low, which means that you're burning a lot more energy trying to get the data than to compute on it. And that is why memory becomes a bottleneck in AI. We thought that compute was the hero. Turns out, latency is the villain. What are we doing about it? There are a lot of solutions that we've hacked up today. For one, we want to try to use as less memory as possible. And the way we do it today is that we actually use techniques to compress our LLMs or other models. 
These are techniques like compression, pruning, distillation. We recompute gradients instead of storing them. We also apply tiered memory structures where the hot tensors live on the GPUs and the cold tensors are moved out of the GPUs. We have also optimized other variants of the software stack, like the batch size and other kernel optimizations. There is, of course, parallelization and sharding of models where you split a model and then spread it across GPUs. So these are clever hacks. But are they sustainable? Not really. There is a fundamental need to re-architect the way our GPUs are designed. And there have been some efforts towards that direction. HBM3E promises a huge bandwidth speed compared to the current HBM standards. We've also seen some standards like CXL that allow GPUs to pool memory together. And then this concept of processing in memory, which is instead of getting the data out of the memory to the compute, why don't we actually compute in the memory itself? It is revolutionary but it's also in the early phases of development. There is, of course, 3D stacking. There is RERAM and MRAM solutions that are out there. All of these solutions are trying to mask the fact that memory remains the bottleneck or the wall to cross for AI. The future of AI lies in thinking about the AI architecture not as a compute-first architecture, but as a memory-first architecture. We want to believe that in the future, model scaling will no longer result in fragmentation. CPU and bandwidth, or GPU and bandwidth, will continue to evolve together. We will be able to pull together multiple memory resources and have a fluid capacity rather than fixed capacity for memory. We would have latency not as a tax, but as an option. This is the future that AI infrastructure deserves. It's time to rethink the Moore's law, not in terms of compute, but in terms of bandwidth. And companies that will thrive in this new era are the ones that consider memory as sacred, and they design for proximity, bandwidth, and flow. The future of AI is not about how fast we can think. It is how fast we can remember. Thank you. Thank you.